Welcome back to Femme K9 Trading, guys. And today we are joined by a beautiful German wide haired pointer called Hank. And Hank is with me for a few quite severe problem behaviors that are causing significant harm to his owners. Now, in this video, I want to talk about the importance of providing a dog with structure and providing a dog with the ability to decompress and relax. We do that utilizing crate training. Now, crate training is not only amazing for those things, but it provides the ability to control a dog's environment to keep them safe and out of trouble. If a dog is in a crate, they can't be destroying your home. If a dog is in its crate, it can't be excessively barking at the window at every time somebody moves past. Crate training is something that I absolutely love, and in my intensive day programs, it's the thing that we need to get addressed quickly as part of the day. And for me to be able to achieve such quick results, timing is everything. Now, like most behaviors, it's important to take a balance philosophy. We have to let the dog understand what it is that we do want and we have to let the dog understand what it is that we don't want. So we praise and reward the desirable behaviour and we correct the undesirable behaviour and you're going to see me doing both in this early session with Hank this morning. a boy. Yes. Good. So just start to drop the treats in. Not asking for much, just that was lovely. Little commitment. That one went a bit further than I was expecting. But we're starting just with a paw, a couple of paws. And it doesn't have to be loads. Yeah, good boy. What I want, the, the desirable outcome, is for him to settle down. If, he, if we can get him lying down, great, because that's the first step to decompression. And like I say, what I'm trying to do is classically condition the act of decompressing with being inside the crate. That's an incredibly powerful tool that I can then give over to the owners later. Yes, good boy, beautiful. So what you're gonna notice here, is that beforehand, I was doing one treat at a time. Three or four treats are going in, followed by another few. Really letting him know, this is amazing. Good boy, good boy, good. So that was really interesting, we were just the cameraman was getting a bit of B-roll to make the video look really pretty. And it was the first time where he was pouring at the door to try and get it to open. And you saw me administer exactly the correction. He's testing a new behavior of trying to pour at the door. His, his brain's working out, how can I get out of here? And that's not the goal of what we're doing here. What we're doing is now this. And so now he's making a better choice. Um, if the cameraman can take a little look, he decided to pop his head back down and relax. So very, very swiftly, it might have seemed like a minor behavior, but that behavior was building. It was the first, he was starting to build. A paw turns into a cry, a cry turns into a bark, a bark turns into fully standing up and really scratching it, and it just quickly devolves. So as soon as we see that coming up, you see verbal correction, and I paired it with just a tap on the crate, just to create that little bit of the jingly noise and a little bit of movement within the crate. And you saw, I don't know if uh, you catch it on the video, hopefully you did, but you see it kind of startles him. He goes, oh, and he looks up at me. Now it is very, very common for people to find my videos, find my system and methodology of dog training to see how delivering corrections can be done in a very loving, ethical and fair way and see that the, there is possibilities and that it absolutely is possible to be able to achieve wild transformations. And a lot of people then become almost too focused on the correction piece of the puzzle, especially when those people have been to so many different positive only trainings trainers who have utilized kind of purely rewards and treats and they weren't able to achieve the success that it is that they were looking for. They therefore kind of forget about that piece of the puzzle and only focus on this new thing that they've just discovered through watching my videos. If a dog starts to display obnoxious, frustrating, loud, bad behaviors in the crate, I'm going to let them know that, hey, no, that isn't acceptable because what I'm trying to teach them is to decompress and relax and calm down in the crate. And when they do start to display those behaviors, you better believe that I'm gonna be rewarding and praising those behaviors instead. And ideally, we want to be reinforcing and rewarding those desirable behaviors far more frequently than we are 
correcting or punishing the undesirable ones. We want that balance to be that way because we're setting our dogs up for success wherever possible. The importance of crate training really can't be understated. It is one of the single most important things I think every dog owner should do with their dog. Being able to give them that safe place to decompress, relax, and unwind whilst also being able to manage their environment and keep them out of trouble go so far in being able to achieve that goal of setting them up for success by setting them up for success we can praise and reward the desirable behavior more and we can stay calmer as their leaders so i hope you enjoyed that video guys i hope there's some tips and tricks that you're able to pull from it and i hope that if you've never crate trained your dog before this video will show you why i do think it's something that could absolutely change you and your dog's life if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you are new here because i can't wait to see you on the next episode of femrear canine training